Okay. So it says you are costing on your, uh, let me just start labeling things, on your some mass bicycle at some speed, let me say initial speed, and a three gram bug, some mass, wait, what's the start with the B? Let me say G. Um, some mass bug splatters on your helmet. The bug was initially moving at, oh, that's interesting. Uh, so let me actually uh, change the labels a little bit. This is going to be V1. And the bug's speed will be V2. Uh, in the same direction as you, if you are mass, capital M, answer the following questions. What was the initial momentum of you plus your bicycle? Um, okay. Um, so I'm just going to be using the definition of momentum, which is it's defined as mass times velocity. And if necessary, you can describe it as a vector quantity to highlight the direction. Uh, let's just work through it one by one. And once we have all the numbers, we'll just plug them in all together. Um, for ease of understanding, I'm just going to define uh, these variables. And I'll first express my answers in terms of these variables and then uh, plug in the numbers. So in terms of these variables, my initial momentum, uh, actually, let me just uh, define those uh, symbols also so that I can use them. My, oh wait, I didn't have to define that. It's fine. My initial momentum is, uh, uh, it's me plus the bicycle, so, you know, my mass plus the bicycle's mass um, times uh, the our combined speed, V1, or combined velocity. This the this is the total momentum. So my uh, numerical value, I can substitute in the, uh, the values, mass of 60 kilogram, um, mass of the bicycle of uh, 10 kilogram, and my initial speed of 15 meters per second. And I make sure the units work out here. Oh, let me put in a dot so it does get 1050 um, kilogram meter per second. That's my initial momentum. And the initial momentum of the bug, okay. Um, oh, yeah, so this is going to be for, uh, for me plus a bicycle. Um, and the uh, initial momentum of the bug is going to be um, the mass of the bug. Uh, and uh, let me be careful here. They're giving us mass of the bug in grams but the momentum is in units of kilogram meter per second. So I'll have to do that unit conversion eventually. So mass of the bug times uh, its speed, V2. And I'm going to, uh, so that's initial moment of the bug. And let me substitute in the values. So the mass of the bug, it's going to be three grams converted into kilograms. It's gonna be three times 10 to the power of minus three. And then V2, it's in basic SI units, uh, 1.5. So, and this is going to be for momentum of the bug. Okay, 0 0.0045. Yeah, that's quite small. Um, uh, let's make sure we got these two right. Because uh, if uh, I got these two wrong, then the rest won't make sense. So, initial momentum of me plus bicycle, 1050, oh, sorry, 1050 kilogram meter per second. Uh, moment of the bug, I guess, uh, let me just do it each way, uh, not have to convert it to scientific notation. So, all right, that looks good. It asks, what is your change in velocity due to collision with the bug? Mind the sign of your answer? Oh, yeah, because they're asking for change in, so, you know, I think if I say zero, it'll tell me it's wrong because, uh, yeah, yeah. It, even though it's going to be a very small number, they don't want me to use zero, so. Let's just uh, work this out properly <laughs> so that we can answer properly. So where it asks for change in velocity, um, it's a, what it's really asking is what is the final speed uh, or final velocity. Once you figure out the final velocity or the algebraic expression for the final velocity, then we can say the change in velocity is going to be the final velocity minus my initial velocity, which is V1 here. So 
So really, that's what I'm going to do. I'm first going to solve for the final velocity. And then from knowing the final velocity, I'll work out the change in velocity. So um, I hope as you are reading this question, especially as you read the part where the bug splatters, that you've identified this as a sticking collision. Because the bug literally stuck to you, stuck to your helmet. And once you identify something as a sticking collision, then what that leads to is that this is a completely inelastic collision. And if you identify something as a collision for one, and especially if you identify this completely inelastic collision, you can uh, skip a few steps in conservation law strategy, problem solving, um, and just uh, uh, go straight to conservation of uh, total momentum. Because that's what uh, all these conditions being specified in the question will allow you to say, you know, that it's an inelastic collision, so energy isn't conserved, and, uh, but it's a still a collision where only the internal forces are significant, no external force imparting that impulse. So, uh, so we can say momentum is conserved. And because it's completely inelastic with uh, these two objects having the same final speed, uh, you have enough information to actually solve through just uh, using conservation of total momentum. So, uh, so I'm going to start out with my conservation law equation. The total momentum uh, before collision is equal to the total momentum after the collision. And here I didn't uh, draw the pictures, but I think I get some sense of what the initial is. My initial momentum will be, I have momentum of bicycle and me. So momentum of a bicycle and me moving at speed of V1 plus. And it says the bug is moving in the same direction as me. So I don't have to worry about minus sign. I can just say for the momentum of the bug, it'll be mass of the bug times its speed v2 that the sum of this that's my total initial momentum and i say this is equal to my total final momentum which is uh i'm going to assume that mass of the bug adds to my mass even though it's so minuscule i can probably skip it but for completeness sake that let's say the total momentum of the stuck together objects is the bicycle me and the bug moving together at oh i need to solve for final V final. So this is the one unknown in this one equation. I think I'm given everything else. So I should now go through the algebra and I'm going to be a little bit lazy and just to use my computer algebra system to do this relatively easy algebra for me. And then we'll go from there. Um, I think I defined all the symbols already. So let me uh, write out this equation. If I somehow forgot a symbol, the system will complain that I forgot it. Mass of the uh, bicycle plus my mass times V1 plus uh, mass of the bug times its speed. That's equal to the final momentum, mass of the bicycle plus my mass plus mass of the bug times V final. Oh, did I define? I might have defined the V final earlier. So if I did, I'll just continue using it. Yeah, that looks fine. So I'm going to take this and solve it for V final. Looks good. Let me put that uh, last output, first element into its own variable so that I can, um, oh, what do I do from here? So I guess what I'm doing is, because they're not asking for the final speed, but they're asking for change in velocity, really what I'm looking for is this solution, minus V1, which was my initial speed. And I think I'm going to get a reduction in speed. So it'll be end up being a, 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 a negative value. I think that's fine. So I'm going to take this expression. And by the way, this will do this stuff to both sides. Um, and I'm going to substitute in all the values I know. Uh, so my own mass is 60 kilograms. Bicycle's mass is 10 kilograms. And bug's mass, I have to convert 3 grams. So, so 3 times 10 to the minus 3 kilogram. And V1 was 15. V2 was 1.5. Let's see what it gives us. 
So left hand side is what I put in. Yeah, right hand side is minus. Uh, you know, that's not that many zeros. I think I can type that. Uh, so it's uh, minus 0 0.000579 meter per second. Yeah, good. Uh, oh, and uh, what would the, the change in velocity have been if the bug were traveling in the opposite direction? Here's a fun thing about using computer algebra system. Uh, if you are convinced that this equation that we wrote down before is still valid if I plug in a negative value of V2, which in this case it actually is, then you can just use the exact same thing. I don't have to change a thing here. I don't have to change a thing here. All I have to do is plug in a negative value of V2. Now, it's not always the case that it'll work out, but um, <laughs> sometimes it is. So here, I'm going to take this solution and just for V2, instead of 1.5, it'll be minus 1.5 meter per second to indicate that it's traveling in the opposite direction. And we'll get an answer that's different, a little higher, and that should be correct. Minus, oh, let's do it this way. So one, two, three, four. So 10 to the minus three. So minus 7.07 .07 .07 times 10 to the power minus, did I say three, four? Uh, one, two, three, four, yeah. To the minus four, uh, yeah. So that should be correct. So that's actually one of the true advantage of using computer algebra system beyond um, enabling laziness is that uh, you know what's asking in part D. It can be kind of a busy work if you are doing this by hand because you are not really doing anything new here. You are just uh, uh, using a different value and uh, in a calculator or advanced calculator like computer algebra system, it's really easy to change that one number and have it redo the same tedious calculation. So, all right, good.